It was the morning of 11 September 2001, when 19 kamikaze belonging to the Al-Qaeda terrorist organization hijacked four commercial airliners with the aim of hitting four strategic targets of strong symbolic value for the United States. Two Boeing 767 crash on the two twin towers of the World Trade Center in New York, a large complex of seven buildings, while a third plane, the Boeing 757, crashes into the west wing of the Pentagon in Washington, the headquarters of the United States Department of Defense. The fourth plane, the Boeing 757, was supposed to crash into the Capitol or the White House, but thanks to a revolt by the passengers, the plane crashed into an open pit coal mine near Shanksville in Pennsylvania. The National Institute of Standards and Technology, a government agency of the United States, has estimated that approximately 17,400 civilians were present in the World Trade Center complex at the time of the attacks. According to the official toll, the terrorist attacks of 11 September led to the deaths of 2,996 people, including 2,977 victims and 19 hijackers, more than 6,000 injured, and serious consequences on the long-term health of many people. Hundreds of people died in the exact moment in which the two planes hit the two towers, both made up of 110 floors, for a total height of over 1,345 feet. The first plane hijack crashed into the North Tower between the 93rd and 99th floors, killing 1,466 people. 1,356 people were on the floors affected by the plane impact or on the upper floors, while 110 were on the lower floors. The second hijacked plane instead struck the South Tower between the 77th and 85th floors, killing 624 people, of whom 618 were at or above the point of impact and six people on the lower floors. People who were on the floors affected by the impact of the two Boeing 767 died instantly. The others trapped in the building, on the other hand, lost their lives in the fires that flared up following the combustion of the approximately 38,000 liters of kerosene contained in the tanks of each plane. Others died from smoke inhalation or the collapse of the building, while others fell or voluntarily jumped from the towers to escape a now-sealed fate. Some jumped in pairs, others in groups, others held hands, before launching themselves into the void. 200 people fell or jumped from the North Tower, three from the South Tower, at speeds between 125 and 200 miles per hour, taking less than 10 seconds to reach the ground. The World Trade Center was a large complex of seven buildings arranged in an area of 16 acres and was called Ground Zero to identify the point most affected by the terrorist attacks of 11 September. The collapse of the two towers released more than 1.8 million tons of debris into the surrounding area, causing the formation of a huge black cloud that engulfed the people trapped inside the buildings. Rescuers engaged in recovery operations and rescue, and the thousands of civilians and children near the disaster site. The gigantic dust cloud contained a heterogeneous mix of highly toxic substances, differing in size, density, and composition. High quantities of particulate matter were released, a known pollutant present in urban areas but which following the collapse of the Twin Towers reached extremely dangerous levels for human health. We speak of airborne particulate matter, more commonly known as fine dust, and it indicates the set of solid and liquid atmospheric particles dispersed in the atmosphere and can be classified according to the size of these particles. 1.5% of the dust collected at or around ground zero had an aerodynamic diameter less than or equal to 2.5 microns, also called fine particulate matter. 0.5% between 2.5 and 10 microns. The 40% between 10 and 53 microns, also called coarse particulate matter. And finally, 58% of the particles had a diameter greater than 53 microns. 
Depending on their diameter, the particles will deposit more or less deeply in the respiratory system. PM10, once inhaled, reaches the mouth, pharynx, and larynx, located in the upper tract of the respiratory system. PM2.5, on the other hand, is able to go even deeper and reach the lungs. From here, some particles can also enter the capillaries through the walls of the pulmonary alveoli and then enter the bloodstream, causing damage to the cardiovascular, hepatic, renal, and nervous systems. Over 400,000 people, in particular firefighters and rescuers, were exposed to high levels of particulate matter and other toxic substances from ground zero. The short and long-term health effects of this exposure have led to the onset or worsening of a variety of respiratory symptoms or illnesses. The main respiratory health consequence was World Trade Center Cough Syndrome, a persistent cough characterized by asthma, bronchitis, and rhinosinusitis, inflammation of the mucous membrane, and paranasal sinuses, often also accompanied by gastroesophageal reflux. Exposure to the toxic cloud of 11 September has also caused an accelerated decline in respiratory function, lung lesions, chronic laryngitis and pharyngitis, sarcoidosis, inflammatory pathology characterized by the formation of small red and swollen nodules called granulomas, which in 90% of cases affect the lungs and lymph nodes. Finally, among other consequences, we find chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, a serious, irreversible and progressive respiratory disease characterized by bronchial obstruction and caused by chronic inflammation of the airways and lung parenchyma. As for the composition of the toxic cloud, 80 to 90% of the deposited dust was a highly alkaline mixture of crushed concrete, gypsum, and crushed synthetic glass fibers. 9 to 20 percent was represented by cellulose, 0.8 to 3 percent by asbestos, as well as appreciable quantities of some heavy metals, including lead and mercury. The combustion of more than 80,000 liters of kerosene caused a series of fires that released a wide range of toxic and carcinogenic substances into the air, such as polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, dioxins, and polychlorinated bethanols. Fires that continued to burn at ground zero for 100 days after the collapse of the Twin Towers. The smoking pile of debris had become an open-air chemical factory where numerous polluting, toxic, and carcinogenic substances were released day and night. According to some studies, the toxic cloud reached a height of one mile before the smoke traveled about 44 miles. Low levels of dust have been found on the Empire State Building, nearly three miles away, but the greatest risk of suffering health consequences was most likely to occur among people within a 1.5-mile radius of Ground Zero. During the subsequent operations to clean up the site and recover the bodies, there was a continuous resuspension of the dust that had settled on the streets and inside the buildings. This led to many months of chronic exposure by residents and workers near the disaster site. Just think that it took more than nine months and 108,342 trucks to remove the 1.8 million pieces of debris from ground zero. Most of the debris was transported to the Fresh Kills landfill on Staten Island and sifted for human remains. In the days following the terrorist attack, rescuers dug through an inordinate amount of wreckage and rubble for human remains, victims' personal effects, and generic markers for DNA matching and personal identification. A very delicate and difficult operation, as most of the human remains have been pulverized or carbonized, making the amount of DNA to be extracted minimal. In fact, to date, only 60% of the World Trade Center victims have been identified, thus leaving more than 1,000 people without a name. Souls burned and never identified. There, behind a blue wall, placed inside the September 11 Museum, with the message, No day shall erase you from the memory of time, lie the remains of unidentified victims. For 20 years, forensic scientists have tested and retested more than 22,000 human remains that have been recovered from the World Trade Center site, often about the size of a tic-tac. 
a long-lasting effort that is considered the largest and most complex forensic investigation in the history of the United States and which is still going on today thanks to the continuous development of new technologies. However, the health impacts of September 11 are not limited to the onset or worsening of respiratory diseases, but also to some cancers, mental health conditions, and severe psychological stressors. An increasing number of Ground Zero workers fell ill with cancers in the months following the exposure, particularly blood cancers, such as lymphoma, myeloma, and leukemia, forms of cancer that notoriously affect workers exposed to carcinogens in the workplace. Among the survivors, there were reports of elevated rates of prostate, breast, thyroid and lung cancers, as well as an increased risk of cutaneous melanoma and tonsil cancer. Others have developed mesothelioma, an aggressive form of cancer linked primarily to exposure to asbestos used initially in the construction of the North Tower. Twenty years later, researchers have documented neurocognitive and motor dysfunctions resembling the typical features of neurodegenerative disease in some World Trade Center responders. Cortical atrophy, which typically manifests later in life, was also seen in this sample. That is a degenerative form of the tissues of the brain, which consequently shrinks and loses volume, causing a progressive loss of its functions. Exposure to toxic substances could have promoted the neuroinflammatory and neurodegenerative processes that accelerate cognitive deterioration, that is when one or more cognitive functions are lost. Another of the most common side effects was the high rate of post-traumatic stress disorder found among people who witnessed the attacks related to September 11. It is a disorder, often disabling, characterized by recurring memories of the traumatic event, anxiety, nightmares, difficulty in controlling emotions, and excessive reactions to danger signals. Accurately identifying the long-term health consequences of a severe exposure event, such as September 11, takes several years, if not decades. 22 years after that tragic day, the strong smell of burning, the huge toxic cloud that engulfed the city and all those tons of debris have disappeared, but the effects of the toxic substances inhaled still persist and continue to reap numerous victims.